Back in the first few days of March 2008 people were enjoying an early taste of spring. A lot of areas were in the 50s and even 60s in the Ohio Valley, but cold air was moving in from the northwest. Temperatures would plummet and a big storm was brewing. It would lay a blanket of snow from Texas through Ohio and into Canada. And we start out at 1 p.m. on Thursday, March 6, 2008. Light to moderate snow was falling northwest of Dallas up to Oklahoma City. And would continue to fall as the afternoon wore on. After dark southeastern Oklahoma and northwestern Arkansas were seeing a pretty good thumping of snow. Which would continue to fall through 10 p.m. Little Rock was right on the rain snow line and would eventually change over to snow later on in the night. By 1 a.m. on Friday, March 7, the snow was trying to stretch into southern Illinois and still falling over the same parts of Arkansas. By 4 a.m. the snow shield would weaken, with mainly just light snow falling from Dallas, Texas up to Carbondale, Illinois. Also some strong thunderstorms were breaking out over the southeast. These thunderstorms were stealing some of the energy and moisture from the snow back to the west, but the second wave of energy would start to get its act together and the snow would fill back in, and intensify during the day on Friday. As everyone was getting ready to head off to work on Friday, the snow was moving into western Kentucky and southern Indiana. Across the state of Ohio conditions would deteriorate rapidly throughout the morning and afternoon as the moisture moved in. Already by 10 it was snowing from Columbus to Buffalo, with heavier snow falling to the southwest in Louisville. The main wave of energy which would produce the blizzard conditions was still down over Texas and Louisiana and wouldn't really affect Ohio until Saturday morning. But before then the first wave would deliver a first shot of snow from Louisville to Cleveland. This snow was coming down as heavy as an inch per hour at times, but was nothing compared to what was falling over Arkansas and ready to take aim on central Ohio. It would continue to snow throughout the afternoon in Ohio. After sunset on Friday night the snow would lighten over the state but was picking up over Tennessee and Kentucky. And would start to move and by 10 p.m., Cincinnati would start to see the accumulating snow move back in. The precipitation would continue to fall into very early Saturday morning. In Cleveland, Andre Bernier was trying to nail down his forecast on the storm. We obviously have uh, um, our hands full. And uh, stay tuned right here to MyFoxCleveland.com. Even through the day Saturday, Melissa Mack is going to be here in the morning. And uh, we'll have uh, Brad uh, Sussman coming in in the afternoons. We got you covered from top to bottom. And uh, we'll keep you apprised of what's going on. Here's, uh, first of all, a look at radar. Now, the radar in the late Friday uh, hours and almost into early Sunday, Saturday morning uh, showing the first wave of uh, heavy snow pushing off to the northwest in this narrow band up in here. We can get a better feel for it by taking a look at uh, this. You can see that uh, that first wave is now pushing into the northeast, but there's obviously something trailing. Let's take a look at it. We'll tilt the map and we've got an area of low pressure which is still hanging back in Mississippi and northern Alabama. It's now beginning to tap into a lot of moisture in the Gulf Coast, and that little area of uh, heavy snow is going to be riding northeast, and uh, that's what's going to cause our problems, especially on Saturday morning. Now, we have a winter storm warning in effect for all of the viewing area. Winter weather advisories well south. Look at that blizzard warning in the uh, southwestern corner of Ohio, also into uh, southeast Indiana, northern Kentucky. But in addition to our winter storm warning, let's go ahead and show you what else we got going on. Those counties highlighted right there also under a blizzard watch. That begins at 4 a.m. Saturday, goes through Saturday evening, and that is for that second area of snow, which we expect to pick up lots of moisture, toss it into the colder air just right. Those counties, Lake Geauga, Cuyahoga, and then Medina, uh, Holmes, Wayne County, uh, Wayne County rather, uh, on west, uh, will be in for some uh, pretty hefty snows, I figure, uh, in the uh, Saturday morning to early Saturday afternoon period. Here's the area of low pressure. It's actually right in here. The moisture feed is taking place. The heavy snow right in here, you can see it with the enhancement. That will be uh, charting a course right over Cleveland, again beginning early Saturday morning, going into Saturday evening. 
Now, temperatures obviously are going to stay cold enough for all of this event to be snow. There'll be no mixing here, and uh, you'll have to go too far south to be uh, of any great uh, concern or any great uh, mixing that will hold back accumulations. There's the back edge of the snow for Saturday evening. Uh, clearing in the west, which will be here for the weekend. Let's uh, show you the maps in motion. This is the area right in here, uh, which uh, has the greatest dynamics going on. A lot of heavy snow starting to form in here. And we'll go ahead and put this into motion. Notice uh, that uh, uh, it uh, goes right through Saturday morning. But this is Saturday evening. The heaviest snow by then will be to our northeast. The snow will be tapering off to flurries. And uh, obviously at that point, uh, the cleanup will begin. For tonight, periods of snow, uh, a lot of that 3 to 5 inches for the overnight has already occurred, so this will be a total for the overnight period, 3 to 5 on top of what we saw on Friday. For the day Saturday, uh, snow continues, and matter of fact, it's going to start to pick up. And it could be heavy at times. That blizzard watch could easily become a blizzard warning if conditions warrant. Uh, high tomorrow, only uh, 28 degrees for Saturday, and the uh, totals, when all is said and done and the last flake flies, 8 to 16 inches or more, uh, especially up the I-71 corridor and up the I-77 corridor north of Canton. If you live in between those two, uh, you're a prime spot for that heavy snow. The snow quits early Sunday morning. We could even see some sun, but look how cold it stays. We're in March, though. And March means that even with storms of this magnitude, you'll see temperatures often shoot up into the 40s, and that's what's going to happen by the middle of next week. So some of the melt-off uh, will begin at that point in time. Obviously, a lot going on. MyFoxCleveland.com right here, right through the weekend. We got you covered from A to Z, and uh, we'll uh, monitor the situation for you. The storm would intensify rapidly into a sub-990 millibar low-pressure system. And with high pressure to the northwest, it would create a tight pressure gradient causing strong winds on Saturday. At the same time a strong deformation zone would develop and eventually move through the state of Ohio, causing blizzard conditions with winds gusting over 35 miles per hour. The high pressure system would cause dry air to get pulled into the back end of the storm and it would try to squeeze out every bit of moisture in what is called a deformation zone. In this zone you can expect to see very heavy snow as the clouds are stretched and elongated, and all the moisture is squeezed out of the clouds. Rates were in the 2 to 3 inch per hour range with some areas seeing as much as 4 inches per hour during the day on March 8. This would cause the snow to pile up in a hurry, and by 4 a.m. you can start to see that zone setting up. By 7 a.m. the deformation zone was over Kentucky and would move into Ohio throughout the morning. At this time, Jason Handman was in Cleveland reporting on the heavy snowfall. Jason Handman in downtown Cleveland. We are at 9th and Carnegie, and you can see cars are still having problems here. We have an Oldsmobile sitting there trying to get on the on-ramp, and people are trying to get wherever they need to go, but it is still not good if you have a four-wheel drive vehicle. Let's give you a look at some accumulating snow. We had a video crew here earlier at this exact spot. They cleared off the area. That in mind, we're making measuring 13 inches here. It's not an official measurement because there's blowing and drifting snow, but certainly more than a foot of snow falling here in downtown Cleveland. By afternoon, the deformation zone was centered over Ohio, with very heavy snow falling from Cleveland down to Cincinnati. But by 4 it would start to move over northeastern Ohio and western New York and continue through 7 p.m. By 10 the snow had mostly moved out of Ohio but was still hitting parts of upstate New York. It would continue over the upstate for several more hours but would move into Canada and continue to drop extremely heavy snow over the cities of Ottawa and Quebec. Once it was finally over a pretty healthy swath of snow had been laid down in Texas and Arkansas up to upstate New York. Even cities like Greenville and Tupelo in Mississippi had over 3 inches on the ground. Further north Memphis picked up five and a half inches of snow. Areas north of Little Rock, in Arkansas were buried in 10 or 11 inches of snow. Areas in southeastern Indiana and around the Louisville area and north in Kentucky watched over a foot of snow accumulate, with several areas reporting between 14 and 16 inches of snow. A little further to the northeast was an area of 18 inch plus snows. In this region many locations surpassed the 20 inch mark. Columbus had 20.4 inches on the ground and Mansfield with 19.7.
Akron came in with 17.1 inches. Youngstown saw 11.6 inches and Toledo was at 7.2. In Pennsylvania, the snow piled up to 23.4 inches in Erie. The highest total from the storm was in Lake County in Ohio with 28.5 inches measured 5 miles south of Madison. It was one for the record books in the state of Ohio and produced unusually high snowfall totals for the Ohio River Valley. Not many storms are able to produce 20-inch-plus totals over the region, simply because there isn't an immediate moisture source like there is in the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. I am going to wrap it up here and if you enjoyed it please consider hitting that like button and subscribing. Also if you have any other storms you want to see, just let me know in the comments below.